Today we're going to be watching uh, The Invisible Man and talking about it while we watch. And joining us to do that is Lee Winnell, writer and director Hello. of The Invisible Man. I, Lee? I hope you don't mind a friend joining us. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you can see there's my little toy collection behind us. I love it. The Jack Torrance. There's a Jack Burton here that I like. The original Raiders series that they tried to get. Oh, out. look at that. This one I found in a toy store in Turkey, believe it or not. <laughs> oh I don't think this is official. I was given the option of, what if the um, Universal logo disappeared? You know how it's some movies these days tend to want to incorporate the logos into the movie, which I which I like. I saw a cool one the other day for Zombieland 2, where the Columbia woman starts bashing the zombies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I said no, because I didn't want it to step on this title sequence. So these are the original scene cards. Okay, so it was a different opening. So it was a bunch of people coming to his house and looking for him with like heat seeking goggles. It went through a few iterations before I hit upon that opening. And I feel like it was the best way to do it was just to drop the audience right in there. Like you said, with no information. The first draft of the script, you never saw his face. I wrote in the script that he's only ever shot from behind. So you never see his face. Jason Blum and Cooper Samuelson from Blumhouse were both like, this is not the time to go all Sundance on us. Was the quote. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you see in that first trailer was shot and it's, but the thing is we hadn't even finished editing the movie when they cut the trailer. They just were like, oh, this is a good scene. This is a... it, it, it ended up working out for us because when we released the trailer, everyone online was like, they showed too much. And I'm thinking like, Actually, a lot of what they showed isn't even in the movie. <laughs> when you think of the Invisible Man, you think of the guy drinking the potion, like, you know, ha ha, you know, I'm alive or whatever. And, and, and I, never, I never believed the serum. Once you do a little bit of research on invisibility, they are actively trying to come up with invisibility camouflage for soldiers. The suit is covered with all these camera lenses and the cameras take thousands and thousands of photographs per second and map any room that it's in and then project the result onto the other side. And we talked to some scientists. They basically said, yes, this could work. We don't have the technology yet, but in theory, there's a version of this that could work. It just has this weird, it almost looks like a Blade Runner version of a gimp suit. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I didn't want to do too many, for lack of a better term, jump scares in this movie. And to, to circle back to the trailer, like this this shot was in the trailer and I I was fully expecting this to be towards the end of the movie. Right, well, because like, it's, it's such a good there? jump. <laughs> ah! Sometimes when I'm writing, I'll, I usually put together a soundtrack and I'll start imagining almost the trailer for the movie before I've even started writing. When I did that for this movie, one of the first things I was picturing was the, the main character, this woman being sort of pulled around a kitchen. And we actually found a stunt coordinator in Sydney who owned his own motion control rig, which is a robot camera. And that's how we filmed yeah. everything, was using this motion control. If you're using a motion control camera, which has this perfect movement, then everything else has to be perfect. It's almost like the actors have to become robots as well. So yeah, it was quite a, it was quite a few takes before we got that one. This was a really fun scene to write. Like, I love writing these scenes where you pull the rug out because, you know, a screenplay is written to be read. So that's the first goal is, can I intrigue a reader? And so I actually try to write it in a way that makes people go, what the f And so that's where, uh, right now, the yeah. night, I felt like I felt like if I could get that right, everybody would be like, what? It's all about misdirection. In the original version, she did not kill him. It says here, I can't believe I'm... <laughs> Cecilia tells him they will never be together. She has one of his suits. She's leaving. I've got Griffin is enraged. Then he hears a sound. So so basically in the, in the original book, before I even wrote the first draft, my thought was she was going to say to him, I could kill you. I, I guess in my mind, I was like, just him knowing that he can't be near her is enough of a torture. And then as I was writing the movie and he was doing so much to her, I was like, I got to kill this dude. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, 
I honestly haven't talked to anyone about a sequel yet. People will bring it up and I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> the Invisible Hang Woman. On. Yeah, Jason Blum right. will be like, hey, let's, let's, um, let's talk sequel. And I'll be like, nope.